In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build out something similar to the Anthropic Claude Artifacts feature that was just released last week. You'll see on the screen here, what it will do is as soon as it determines that it's going to be using an artifact, it will stream out that artifact on the right hand side of the screen there. And then once it's complete, it will go ahead and finish up the response on the left hand side there. And then finally, once the response is done, it will go and select the visual view. You'll be able to toggle this back and forth. You'll be able to copy the output or you'll be able to download the output as well so just to show you this is a working game of snake and you can play around with it that the screen shifting a little bit so you might have to add something to disable the event on your keyboard to make this a little bit smoother but this is just to give you a general idea on how this could work so right now i have the web dev portion set up so i have the html javascript and css set up and then I also have the ability to render the SVGs. So I'll just demonstrate that. So if I say render a SVG of a crab, you'll see it's going to give us that SVG. And there's something unique with the way that the artifacts work. And I found that there's these groups of buckets of different artifacts here. There is the web dev portion where it will render out like those websites or those games that you're seeing online. There's the SVG portion. And then there is the React component feature. I don't have the React component feature quite figured out quite yet. It's just going to take a little bit more time. And then there is also a really nice graph chart feature within Claude that I haven't quite figured out as well either. I'm just going to run through the code relatively quickly. I'm going to throw this up on GitHub so you can go ahead and look at it, play around with it, do whatever you want with it. The way that I set this up and you'll be able to take this component and put it wherever you want. As long as you're able to have an API that supports the streaming of tokens, you can set this up with any backend. You can set it up with Go, you can set it up with Node.js or Python or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter as long as you're able to stream in those tokens. It's set up in a way where it's actually not using any function calling. This is all from the system message here, which I do want to touch on. There was a Twitter thread that I saw that got the system prompt from Claude. And this is what gave a lot of clues in terms of how I built this out. It gives you a list of all of the different capabilities that's built into the UX and gives you some ideas on how it actually works. I encourage you to read through this. It's really impressive in a few ways. The prompt engineering is really masterful in this. It does work exceptionally well, as we've seen if you played around with Claude. But the other thing that's impressive with this is the model actually follows this very well. I tested this with Llama 70B, did not work. It really did struggle quite a bit with something like this. I didn't try it with GPT-4.0, that is something I'm planning on doing, but you definitely could swap that out with this example as well. We have the skeleton loader that you saw there, it just loads at the top of the screen there. We have our interface set up here for some of the different values that we're gonna be using. And then we have everything within our main component here. What it's doing is all of those tokens are streaming into the front end component here. The way that you can think about this is like a Plinko tile. We're dropping each token in and it's going to land in a particular spot. And what we're doing is we're giving boards within those Plinko points along the way. And we're directing those tokens where we want to have them. The way that I set this up is depending on the XML identifiers, if we know that it's developing, what we're doing is we're routing them to particular spots within the UI. If the token is detected as being within the coding portion, we're going to route that to the right hand side of the screen. If it's just that regular response, we're going to route it within the response side of the screen on the left hand side. If it's developing or if it's ant thinking, that's going to be that trigger on how we render that, that component that we have there. What we're doing here is we're just waiting for all of that to be streaming in. And then as it's streaming in, we're just putting it all in different places. Within the opening tag, if it identifies that it's developing, and then it's going to start to render that artifact. And then once that tag is complete, we're going to go ahead and route those subsequent tokens to the right hand side of the screen there. That's what the main use effect is doing. It's routing things where they need to go. Then what we're going to be doing is we have a use effect to detect on whether it's still streaming. When streaming is done from an LLM, you can get the end values. They're all a little bit different. Some of them say end. Some of them have a different value, but we're just going to wait for that streaming to be done. And that's going to be how we automatically select that rendered view of the HTML or the SVG. I'm not going to be covering this render react portion because this is still a work in progress here. The download artifact is pretty self-explanatory. This can definitely be augmented a bit. So instead of just an artifact.txt, this will be able to ultimately be able to be the file type that it generates. But for now, I just have it as a TXT, but you'll be able to download whatever it has generated within that coding pane. 
Then from there, we're just going to render the buttons for both the copy to clipboard as well as the download button. From there, we're gonna render the artifact. And in this case, we have two different types of artifacts. We have an iframe for how we're gonna be setting our HTML. The way that they're doing this, if you inspect on Anthropic, is they are using the source stock attribute, and that's how they're passing in all of that information into the iframe within the DOM there. And then for our SVG, we're just going to re be rendering that directly within the DOM. Now, if you want to render the React portion, it is a little bit more involved because you have to do some transpile or something like Babel or what have you to actually have that work. So that's a work in progress. And then there's also another portion where it does render these mermaid graphs. So that's a potential other case that you could put within here of if it detects this within that XML tag to choose the different artifact on how it will render within your little viewer there. Within here, this is gonna be how we filter out the different portions within the content view. We have these developing and digesting portion, the pun to the YouTube channel here. These were originally, and what they are right now in production on Claude, are ant thinking and ant artifact. That's going to be the portions that we essentially filter out here. If it's digesting or ant thinking, that's going to be how we render that button that we have there. And then if it's the artifact itself, that's going to be within this tag as well. We're just going to be cleaning it up. It's a little bit of regex, but this is just to give you an overall sense on what this portion is doing here. If the tag of digesting is detected, we're going to just remove that whole XML. So from start to finish, and then you can put in whatever you want here. So in this case, I'm just putting render artifact but you could make it like a nice little button. You could have the file name within here. You could have an icon. You could have a loader like they do within Claude, but that's just to give you an idea on how to do that. And then we're going to be rendering that within Markdown here. If there are any code elements or what have you that do still come in within that left-hand pane, that's going to be how we render that. Next, we just have a wrap HTML and back ticks. So this is just a placeholder here. This is another sort of area of improvement. This is essentially to wrap the Markdown with a viewer and then from there, we're just going to be rendering out our views. So the isolated view, if it is isolated, we're just going to render that full view like you saw within the screen here. It's not really specific to the artifacts use case. It's just like an answer engine thing that I have set up. Then if there is an LLM response, we're going to be rendering this out. And then this is going to be where you see the different methods where we're going to be calling the functions that we had declared above there. If it's loading, we're going to be rendering that skeleton loader. We're going to show that logo of the Anthropic logo. And then here is going to be whether you have the drawer open and close. This is something that you could definitely tie in some nice animation like they have within Claude if you'd like. Right now, I just have it open and appear on the screen here. But that's pretty much it. So all of the logic, it's about 300 lines of code so far. It's going to definitely be a little bit more to add in the React portion as well as those mermaid graphs. But I just wanted to do a quick one, get this out so you could play around with it. Let, let me know your thoughts on it. If you have different ideas on how you would approach this, if you have any questions, just leave them within the comments below. If you have any questions on how I built this or how we thought through this, you can leave it within the comments below. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.